Uh, you know, this is the question we all want an answer to. Are we in a recession or not? I know the official uh, marker of this, Heather, is two consecutive quarters of negative growth here. But it certainly feels like a lot of uh, recession to a lot of us. Well, it is a textbook definition. As you noted, we got the GDP report this morning, another decline of one and a half percent, which fulfills that definition of two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. But uh, look, it's a very different feel this week if you pay any attention to the stock market than it was last week. Right now, you've got uh, the NASDAQ and the S&P up better than 2% on the day. And it's actually been a really good week for the stock market. Last week, we were talking about Walmart and Target and how weak the consumer is and how consumer spending was slowing down, which would also be indicative of a recession. And this week, you've got Dollar Tree. You've got Macy's. Their stocks are surging because they've said, despite these headwinds, uh, that the consumer has been very strong and they're back in stores shopping. So it's just extremely volatile, I think, depending mm -hmm. on which side of the bed you wake up on, either the market surging or tanking on any given day, John. And it does seem to, like Seth, that, you know, you say it's going to be bad, it's going to be awful, and then it's just a little bit better than you said, even though it wasn't very good, it was just better than you said it was going to be. That's enough for investors these yeah. days. Isn't that insane? I mean, but, but that's that's the way the market is being played right now. Again, we talk about it all the time. Timing the market, well, don't. Uh, good luck if you try. Uh, we always talk about the, the long horizon here. Again, if you're in the market and you're looking at your portfolio, your 401k, and you're not retiring for another 10, 20 years, don't look at your 401k. Just don't do it. Uh, it's going to drive you absolutely insane because these little nuances can shift the market in a drastic way, and there's really no fundamental reason as to why, I will tell you, I'm looking at Walmart and Target right now going, why aren't we buying this up? It's down and it's going to go up and it's recession proof stock normally. So there are deals to be had. The market will turn back, but we just, you got to be comfortable with the roller coaster ride that you're going to be on for the next year, probably. Mm. It's true. I mean, it seems like so much of this information is like, it's like top down information. The head of the World Bank wants to tell us what's going on. He wants to talk about uh, Russia and Ukraine. Obviously, that's a factor here, but there's way more involved. Uh, and what we're seeing. Uh, and we also have the global elite in Davos, Switzerland, Heather. Uh, unfortunately, I guess our invitations were lost in the mail. That's a joke. Right, course. I just got back, right? Oh, oh right. I'm okay. not, I'm Sorry, I didn't mean to. I, I should not have excluded you from this conversation. Uh, but some of the comments of the attendees make you sit up in your chair and say, like, what are they talking about? Uh, there was one woman uh, who is the, I guess, the in charge of e-safety in Australia, like, you know, I guess this would be the misinformation board, the version of that in Australia. And here's what she had to say about free speech. And everything feels binary when it doesn't need to be. So I think we're going to have to think about a recalibration of a whole range of human rights. A recalibration of human rights. I thought this was the World Economic Forum, Heather. How do these two things square together? Well, it's funny that the World Economic Forum has turned into a place of if you're concerned about the world uh, stage on a, let's say, humanitarian basis or climate change or global warming. It's interesting they all fly on the, over there on their private jets. Imagine the carbon emissions uh, all of their big private jets, uh, you know, give off into the atmosphere on their way over into Davos. But look, it is it is something that investors look at because economists and see even CEOs from around the world um, do really want to hear what the IMF says, want to hear what other countries, not just in the U.S., are thinking. And all the IM, although the IMF is warning of a global recession, um, I think most of the alarm sounding is due to two things. Higher gas prices, obviously, that has been a tremendous crisis for everyday Americans. And now food shortages, not just caused by the crisis in Ukraine, but you can look at India, for example, and uh, the extreme heat, 120 degrees, upset their wheat harvest this year. Right. So it does become actually an economic crisis, becomes a humanitarian crisis when we can pump more oil. OPEC can, right? Overnight, even if oil prices are soaring. You can't produce more food, plant more crops, harvest right. more wheat overnight. So that economic cost of higher food prices at the grocery store becomes a humanitarian cost. You don't have an alternative like riding a bus when it comes to food. We all starve. That is a big problem. Well, Seth, it seems like also sometimes these uh, international bankers are more concerned with their ESG scores than they are their fiduciary responsibilities. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know what Heather's talking about. I, I thought that those planes flew on fairy dust and, uh, <laughs> you know, unicorn tears. Um, that was effectively what they used to power those things. But that's the sad reality of it. Again, we have this warped idea of fun business fundamentals. Uh, they're not in Davos. Nobody's talking about business fundamentals. Nobody's talking about the structure of, of what Heather's talking about. Listen, there are three key things that we need to be focusing on in the economy right now. Russia, that's a big impact. Whether we like it or not, it is. You've got fertilizer, you've got fuel coming out of there. You've got the other R, which is rates. What are interest rates going to do? In the U.S., we are going to see a global downturn. I'm fairly confident of that. We're already there. Um, and But in America, no matter what the Fed does, you still have this issue of the U.S. dollar is outperforming others, and right. foreign money is going to come in. That's going to create more inflation. And so you got rates, recession, and Russia. Those are the three R's we've got to be focused on. I don't hear that talk coming out of Davos. All right, not uh, the five R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's the three R's <laughs> right now for Seth Denson. Seth, Heather, great to see you guys as always. We'll see you next Thursday for the next Money Huddle. Thanks, buddy. Yeah.